Trump is very much like Marmite. You either love him or you hate him. But credit where credit's due. Trump's a successful and savvy businessman, hence why he's made a fortune in his investments over the decades. Could this then be the reason why Trump wanted to sit and negotiate with Iran following his decision to remove the United States from the JCPOA? However, the openly anti-Iran hawk John Bolton, then national security advisor to Trump, diverted Trump from this course of action. With Bolton about to release his book, The Room Where It Happened, it seems that Trump has proven himself to be easily influenced by his entourage, as Bolton has stated that it was the trio of himself, Mike Pompeo and Benjamin Netanyahu who dissuaded Trump from taking the idea further. The French president Emmanuel Macron, who was due to broker the deal, had all but convinced Trump that negotiations with Iran was the right thing to do. Yet Bolton recants with glee how it was he and Pompeo that had worked together to undermine both Trump and Macron. However, in his usual fashion, Trump was quick to label his one-time closest advisor as a criminal, stating that the actions of Bolton in publishing the book are illegal, as the information that Bolton has disseminated is classified and hence breaches national security norms. And uh, Somebody said he went out and wrote a book. If he wrote a book, I can't imagine that he can because that's highly classified information. Even conversations with me. Uh, they're highly classified. I told that to the Attorney General before. I will consider every conversation with me as President highly classified. So that would mean that if he wrote a book, and if, it, if the book gets out, he's broken the law. With so many staff being hired and fired by Trump, one has to wonder exactly who is running the country, with the likes of Pompeo, Bolton and Netanyahu easily influencing the man who claims to have all the power. It clearly seems that Trump is punching above his weight when it comes to being a world leader and so-called commander-in-chief. One of the first people to point out that Donald Trump was a total flop when it came to running the United States and engaging in foreign policy was Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Zarif, who suggested that Trump was being ill-advised by his entourage. I believe President Trump unfortunately does not have good advisors. He's been waiting for Iranian government's uh, collapse since he withdrew from the nuclear deal. At that time, John Bolton promised him that maximum pressure will bring us to our knees within a few months. If Trump was genuine in his attempts to make contact with Iran, why then did he make the fatal decision of assassinating Lieutenant General Qasem Soleimani? something that's left a rather bitter taste in the mouths of the Iranians, and something that senior politicians in the US have described as reckless and fraught with consequences. The haphazard decision-making process that led up to it, the failure to consult with our allies or Congress, and the reckless disregard for the consequences that would surely follow was, in my view, dangerously incompetent. Furthermore, North Korea has also fatigued of Trump's false promises, with the North Korean government stating that it sees little use in maintaining personal relationships with Trump as Washington sticks to their national policies against Pyongyang, in spite of promises of progress and cooperation. Iran has also shown no desire to make any pledges to commit to starting new talks with a government that fails to act on its promises, as well as a government that is ready to assassinate senior members of the Iranian nation. The Iranian representative of the United Nations, Ali Reza Mir Yousafi, has also stated that prior to any action being taken by Iran to progress talks with the US, there must be in return an equal playing field put in place and see the US end its economic terrorism and maximum pressure campaign against Iran. Iran, for its part, has further reiterated this point by seeing new Iranian parliament speaker Mohammad Bagher Qalibov also stating that Iran will not talk to the United States, stating the US is a source of global arrogance. What now remains to be seen is whether the US will see Trump enter a second term in office and whether the US finally takes the steps necessary to stick to its word and for Trump to finally settle on a cabinet that he can keep for longer than he can hold his breath. <laughs>